Art Deco is all about geometry, order, circles and curves. Born in the interwar years, this artistic movement can be seen everywhere across northern France, be it in the architecture, in decorative objects or even in cars. Philippe is a collector, and today he's driving a voisin, the name of the French automobile manufacturer, who during the 1920s built cars that are now considered to be works of art. It's light, the steering's good, as are the brakes, and as you can hear, it's not noisy. Unlike other cars built during the same period, which were rather loud, in this one, you can hold a conversation, something you could rarely do in other contemporary vehicles. This car was constructed in 1927, that slap bang in the middle of the Art Deco period. You can see it has these very square shapes and it has Art Deco designed fabrics. Voisin was the first car maker to introduce coloured fabrics in its cars. With over 3,000 Art Deco buildings, Saint-Quentin is a must-see for any fan of this style of architecture. After the First World War, the town lay in ruins, and the authorities here chose to rebuild it using the latest Art Deco designs. The cafe at the railway station first opened in 1926. Fabienne is a mosaic artist who's now working on its renovation. We have these lines and these curves and geometric shapes. It was a bit of an explosion of all these luxury materials whether it was the use of ebony as a wood or gold leaf in the mosaics. It's still really magic because we're stepping back in time and putting ourselves in the shoes of craftsmen who created all of this almost a hundred years ago. The railway station and its café are now listed as some of France's historic monuments, and the renovation work was completed here in May 2017. 50 kilometres away from Saint-Quentin is Cambrai, another victim of the First World War. Many of the buildings here, both public and private, are also treasures of the Art Deco movement of the 1920s. Hello. In the entrance hall of the Lycée Fenelon, the pupils are lucky enough to have this magnificent geometric glass dome, created by the architect Frédéric Le Prince Ringuet. You have two key characteristics of the Art Deco movement combined here. First of all, you have the light. The importance was to get as much light flooding into the buildings. And the second characteristic is the use of concrete. It was a material that was widely used after the First World War. It was easy to use and it wasn't expensive. This work of art is also a real technical achievement. Right up to the present day, the glass is held together in this lead design, which is supported by concrete. And we've long been wondering how he managed to create this very delicate pattern, which holds up this huge dome. That's really extraordinary. In the 1930s, Art Deco became much more widespread and even filtered down to the working class. The Notre Dame des Mineurs church was built for Polish families who came to France to work in the mines. Isabel shows visitors around this stylized place of worship. You really have this feeling of being in a tunnel. Yes, just like in the tunnel of a mine, with all these arches in reinforced concrete. And in the space between, you really have this notion of an underground tunnel that the miners would be familiar with. And here you have this lamp. And as you can see at the very top of it, you have this embossed glass, which casts a very different kind of light. During the 1960s, the building was neglected and was very nearly torn down. But thanks to more than 300 local families, the church was saved and is now a listed building. 
Staying on the coal field, the Roger Salangro pool welcomed its first visitors back in 1936 in Brouet la Boussière. Its design was inspired by transatlantic ocean liners which steamed their way across the ocean in the interwar years. Along the side walls you have this wave pattern which is repeated everywhere. And then you have these little round windows which mirror the portholes of an ocean liner. And then there's the two-tone collar scheme of beige and blue which adds to the nautical theme. This was really one of the first accessible places for miners to relax after they were given paid holidays for the first time. They still didn't necessarily have the means to go far after a day down the pit, so beautiful places like this one were built close to their homes so they could come and unwind more easily. It's a last dive into the world of Art Deco and a last lap in this pool built for the local mining community. Today, it's their descendants who come to enjoy an outdoor dip as soon as the sun appears.